Music is a lot more than just a collection of notes. Packed with creativity and emotion, it seems like something only humans could make. But that could be about to change. I've been meeting musicians around the world who are embracing the machine, and I started at Imogen Heap's house. So we've been lucky enough to be invited to Imogen's studio just outside of London. Uh, this is the place where many of her hits uh, that you might recognise and also the music for the Harry Potter stage show were, were created or worked on. And now it's being used to create something a little bit different. Imogen has been working with artificial intelligence researcher Tom Collins. Many of the underlying parts of this experimental, unreleased track were generated automatically by his AI algorithm. We are the shadows behind the shadows. I thought that was the AI in everything. No, I love it. I love that, um, the challenge of this is going to be different. It's generated a song that I would never have written because it's taken me into patterns that I would normally haven't done. So I've had to go, well, how would I do that? And how would I transition from this to this? It's doing what I hoped it would do, which is what I believe AI will do for music and musicians, which is to push us to the next level of our own creativity. This song is still a work in progress, but Imogen isn't the only major performer that Tom has been working with. Performed by Tom and his family, but composed in a large part by the AI, Tom is hoping this track could be winner of the first ever Artificial Intelligence Eurovision Song Contest. Did someone say Eurovision? Yes, while coronavirus may have forced off the human competition this year, the AI competition is still on. What a relief. The AI Song Contest is a contest for uh, computers, actually, in short. Uh, different teams from all over Europe and Australia uh, are given uh, the job to uh, create a new Eurovision song with the help of AI. The German team Databots have previously made a name for themselves with their 24-7 live streams of AI-generated death metal. Here's a taste. Well, if infinite death metal's not your thing, maybe their AI Eurovision entry that you're hearing now will be more your bag. Originally, we were going for a 100% AI generated uh, approach. Here, we first tried it um, by training our net on all of the Germany's Eurovision songs, but it, it didn't sound, you know, broadcast worthy. So in, instead, we, we flipped it. We're like, okay, let's approach this like we're music producers, just using these tools uh, to enhance our workflow. This is another entry. Called Come Together, it was made by the Swedish team. All of the machine learning algorithms we've seen are only as smart as the data puts into them. By analysing mountains of existing songs, the idea is to try and learn the fundamental patterns that make up music. We gave the neural network a huge amount of data and what the neural network does, it tries from the data to extract patterns. So it creates over time new melodies that were not in the data sets and they are brand new. But do AI advances like this mean that human composers are at risk of being replaced? Ed Newton Rex is a judge in the competition. Maybe, in a way, we as people don't want to think that AI systems can be musically creative. And I think that's totally fair and totally understandable. But I think what we're saying is that shouldn't be the aim of AI composition. The aim should be to be a tool for musicians, a way of inspiring them, a way of um, giving them sort of new musical ideas and letting them maybe input an idea and seeing what the AI system does with it. This is an AI music competition, but the humans have been an indispensable part of the process. Whether that will be true for humans in the future, though, may not be quite as certain. Yeah. 